Would you be so kind to read this into the microphone? ccss.math.content.1.0a.c.6 Add and subtract within 20, demonstrating fluency for addition and subtraction within 10. Use strategies such as counting on, making 10, decomposing a number, leading to a 10, using the relationship between addition and subtraction. And create an equivalent but easier or known sums. Thank you very much. Uh, could you explain to us a little bit about what this standard is saying? Nothing. Not a thing. It's not easy to read, actually, um, for being a standard. I had to read it over a couple different times, and um, it looks like students need to be able to add and subtract, but I'm not really sure what all the in-between is. What does that all mean to you? Absolutely nothing. Could you interpret it at all for us? Uh, I lost my breath thinking about it. The truth is, Common Core standards are difficult to read. They're difficult to understand. This is a perfect opportunity for us to look at a specific standard, tear it apart, and see what the actual standard means. After we discuss what the standard means, I'll go through a couple of ways at which teachers can address the standard in the classroom. As we know, looking at these standards as a whole can be a complex task. They are very wordy. In order to make the task a little bit easier, we're going to break this standard down sentence by sentence. Let's get started by taking a look at the first sentence highlighted in blue. The first sentence reads, add and subtract within 20, demonstrating fluency for addition and subtraction within 10. I see this first sentence giving us two I can statements for students. They are, I can fluently add and subtract within 10, keyword fluently, and I can add and subtract within 20. The students enter this standard with knowledge of adding and subtracting within 10. And what this first sentence tells us is that we want to take that knowledge and expand on it to adding and subtracting within 20. Let's take a look at the next sentence. It's a wordy sentence with a lot of terms in it that may be unfamiliar to some teachers. I see five strategies in this sentence. They are counting on, making 10, decomposing, the relationship between addition and subtraction, and using known sums. We're going to take a look at each of those five in just a minute, but before we do so, let's talk about two I can statements coming from this sentence for students. I can understand the relationship between addition and subtraction, and I can use a known sum to solve a problem. Let's break down each of these five strategies. The first of the five strategies is counting on. I like to think of this as students counting on their fingers. For example, 15 plus 3 is 15 as a starting point. 16, 17, 18, the answer is 18. The next of the five strategies is making 10, where students try to get to the number 10 because that's an easy number to add and subtract with. So we can break up this 7 in this case to be 2 and 5. 8 plus 2 gives us 10, adding 5 is easy to get to 15. Next is decomposing leading to 10. With subtraction, we want to subtract a number so that we can get to 10, making our next subtraction problem easier. In this case, we'll decompose our 9 into be 8 and 1. 18 minus 8 gets us to 10, subtracting another 1 takes us to the value of 9. The relationship between addition and subtraction is next. Students should know that 8 plus 4 is 12. So we also can say that 12 minus 8 is 4. There's a certain number bond that's present with these three numbers, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. The last is known sums, where students use their knowledge that they have to help them solve a problem. In this case, let's say a student knows that 7 plus 7 is 14. So I want to break up that 8 to be 1 and 7 because the student would have the knowledge of 7 and 7 being 14. Adding another 1 gets us to our answer which is 15. Now that we have an understanding of what the five strategies are, let's take a look at an activity that could be used in the classroom to teach one of these strategies. This activity will have three different parts to it. One part with manipulatives, one part with the number bond system, and one part writing mathematical sentences. Let's investigate the relationship between addition and subtraction. In order to do so, we're going to go through a student activity that models Singapore math, where the students start with manipulatives, 
They put those manipulatives in picture form, and then we can take it to the abstract or writing mathematical sentences using numbers or letters. Suppose the students are given two groups of pennies. Obviously, we can see that one of the groups has three and the other has two. We would ask the students questions about these pennies. How many pennies are there in each group? How many pennies are there total? The students should be able to use their knowledge to count the total number of pennies. That would be using one of the count on strategies. From there, students are asked to represent this using the number bond picture. These number bonds are very important because they will help students see the relationship between addition and subtraction. It's basically a pictorial model for the students to remember. So what the students will do is place each of the parts in the circle on the number bond. The two and the three are the parts, or the pennies, that they had originally. And the five is the answer, or the whole number, the whole total. What the students will do from here is take it to the abstract level, or actually write a mathematical sentence. For example, students could write two plus three equals five, or part plus part equals whole. Similarly, we have 3 plus 2 equals 5. This process helps students see the relationship between addition and subtraction as well. Using the number bond, we can write sentences like 5 minus 2 equals 3, or 5 minus 3 equals 2. The important part is, is that these number bonds help students see the relationship between three numbers. If a student knows that 5, 2, and 3 are a part of this number bond, writing addition and subtraction sentences is very easy for them. And also recalling them from memory is going to be much easier as well. Obviously this has been an example of operating within 10. But we could do the same activity operating within 20 to address the standard at hand. I hope that this video answered some questions that you had about the standard. If you have any additional questions or comments or would like best practices for your classroom addressing this standard, feel free to contact me in the near future. Until we meet again.